I'm Tom Hilton. I'm here at the Potsdam Historical Society. We're talking to Clara Haas, who's been a mainstay of the Potsdam Historical Society for 25 years. And at the same time, she is the longest serving member of the Potsdam Regional Public Library, going from 1960 almost until the year 2015. And she'll be talking about some of the history of the Potsdam Library and also of the Historical Society. So Clara, you served with the Potsdam Public Library for longer than anyone else in the history of the library. I started in 1960. 1960 is when you started? So yeah. how old were you when you started at the library? Okay, I was 18. 18 years old? And I started in 1960 under Miss Close, Frida Close, I should say Miss Close, and they couldn't pay me, but I volunteer on one night and Saturday, and then we got a little bit, then she said, I can pay you 50 cents an hour. So where were you going to school when you started? Watertown. Watertown? And then I graduated in 1961, and then they picked me up. I was still on part time. So you started at the library, and was it Miss Gross? Miss Gross, she was my first director. And I think she was the longest serving director, yes, wasn't she? Yes, she was about, oh, I would say probably close to, she started in the, in the 40s, and let's see, in the 70s. So when you started, if you started in 1960? I went up to the old library. You were at the old library. 415 High Street. So the old library was located about where it was Philadelphia National Bank, and then it was Wells Fargo, oh, and it's yeah, closed yeah, right the now. The house, yeah, we have a picture of that. That was some view. You remember the house? Uh, that was before my time. It was called? Yeah. Uh, 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 there's a picture of, uh, there. So I believe it was called the Castleberry? The Castleberry, yeah. It was the Castleberry, Castleberry yeah. Mansion. Oh, it was a view. And it was actually, it was started by the Century Club ladies. Yeah. And actually, the first library was started actually in 1910 at High in Hanover. That's what Miss Gose told me. Mm -hmm. And then she took over in the, in the 40s. She became the... Yeah, and, that, and, and it was just one floor, and the second floor was where the Century Club ladies would meet once a month. So this was a, a mansion, really, of a oh, wealthy oh, person. Oh, it was beautiful. The woodwork and the, I mean, and upstairs, I mean, I mean it was a, actually a home, I mean. And the library was on the first floor, and I believe there was a very large reading room in the front with in the big front, windows. Yeah. And you you going and you're going to only men was allowed in there. Is that right? Yes. And Miss Gold would say, you know, make sure. And, and then when I first started, I wasn't allowed to work at a desk. And she said, you, you, all your job you have to do, take care of the books, re repair them. When new books come in, cover them, and that's it. So you're saying when you really got started? How I got, was in the, uh, the high school in Boyertown. I got really involved with helping the Boyertown uh, School Library. And I just, I don't know, it just snowballed. I just got really interested in it. And, uh, I remember one summer, at that time, the, the board time didn't have no public library. And Mr. Gilbert, he was a principal then, he said, we want to try to have the library maybe open in the summertime. Will you be able to help? He said, we can't pay you. I said, that's okay. But he said, the only thing, you can want it, but he said, we have to have a teacher. He said, I know you'll be okay, but literally you have to have a teacher with you. Because you're still, I was in 11th grade when I did And so two summers we did that. I can't remember, it was two, I think it was Monday and Wednesday we were open. So when you were at the Boyertown Library, that's how you- At the high school. The high school library, that's how you got interested in libraries. Yeah. And, and of course, Potsdam was the center of the universe then. So you came to Potsdam because they had a full service library. Yeah, they, yeah. And you volunteered, and Miss Gross took you on as a volunteer, yeah. and you were a volunteer for what, a year or two before? Probably said about two years. Two years, yeah. and then she started paying you? Yeah, and, and then- A quarter an hour, did you say? 20, 50 cents. 50 cents an uh, that hour. Was, that was <laughs> Big money. I know. <laughs> okay. And you weren't at the desk at first. You had to take in books and go through all the books yeah. before they were cataloged uh, and put on the shelves. So, yeah. So tell us about the big move from, uh, from uh, the I'll Castleberry never, Mansion I'll to where they are I'll never forget that. We, they did it in, uh, let's see, Harold Jenkins was the first uh, professional librarian that came. Uh, 
uh, I remember Miss Gold. She 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 said she she's better step down. She didn't have no degree, mm -hmm. but she, she she know her book. She really did. Mm -hmm. but, <clears throat> but she was so glad. Mr. Jenkins took over. Okay, he was from Pottstown, Howard Jenkins, mm -hmm. and uh, they moved in one day. Uh, probably like a week before we we got everything in order. We, everything was in the basement and stuff. And I don't know how they did it. We did it one day. We had uh, people up at the old library, and when they came down to the, to the post office, it was like a chain. So let's go back to how the library got the old post office. Okay, way I understand was uh, Tom Hilton, um, uh, Tom Storm, uh, and um, Swiker. Uh, I think they were one of the senator from uh, Senator Swiker. I can't remember. He was down around. Dick Schweiker was our congressman. Yeah, maybe. At the time. Yeah, and uh, and then that time I think there was a Roger Firestone was in town. Because mm -hmm. Tom Hilton, no, no, not Tom, Tom Storm, those men was able to work together to get that. Get the line. Uh, to get the, the post, post office, office, post office, which had moved move. to where it is now, now. in Ryan Addison. Yeah, yeah. So there was an empty building. Uh, yeah. And you said that Congressman Schweiker. And Tom Storm yeah. worked together yeah. to see if the post office would donate it to the library. And I remember, um, I never met the gentleman, but I know um, Roger Firestone, one, he, he lived in Pottstown. Uh, he was involved with that, and there was two other men, too. I should have got that out. Was Roger Firestone a Hill School student at one time? I don't know. I, he might have been. I think he was, but think, go ahead. I'm yeah. sorry. And I, um, and I remember... Um, for like, I think it was 20 years, uh, they would come and check on the building until we actually owned it officially. Somehow, there were all kinds of paperwork. I mean, I never really got involved with it, but I remember what, when we had staff meeting, what Ms. Gillis was telling was going on, and then what Mr. Jenkins told. Mm -hmm. And it'd be interesting, what, what Mr. Jenkins really wanted to do, he wasn't so crazy about getting the post office. Actually, what he wanted to do was, I don't know, we don't have, but I have a picture of the old library. I don't know if they still have it. He wanted to take that house at 415, knock it down, and build a building on that particular lot, of the, uh, and one story, and go back from High Street all the way back to King Street. But for some reason, the board did not like the idea. They didn't want that beautiful house knocked down, and so he, Sort of left. He has a really good idea, but um, their politics didn't always meet. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean. So the post office building was donated to the library, yeah. and you say they moved all the books in one day. One day, the Century Club thought to help. The JP, uh, even borough council members, I mean, some was up there, and then we like different us. Like I was at the um, library where now we had like. This box would take number one, number two. We knew what shelf to put on. And at that time, the basement wasn't open. It was just one floor. The children's apartment was like where the desk is now. Mm -hmm. That's where we had the children's apartment. Because it, it, actually the basement was still not really ready to be. And it wasn't until probably maybe 10 years later that they actually got money to open it up. And then Diane Kaplan, David Kaplan, she was the first children librarian. And but we still, she was still upstairs. Everything was on the first floor. It, it took uh, it took many years to get it really where we are now. So after Harold Jenkins left, was Mrs. Bowerly the next librarian? Yeah. And she was a librarian for a long time. Oh yeah. Right? Uh, and when she was there, it was during the time she was there, I believe you did get the. Uh, the money to put in the stair tower, the glass stair tower, yeah, and the elevator to uh, yeah. the second floor, which yeah. you didn't yeah. have. Yeah, she really did. A lot. I mean, I would think the other day, it ought to be. I was one of thirteen directors. Thirteen. Thirteen. Wow, but <laughs> it, Mrs. Bowerly was there probably. Besides Mrs. She, Rose, she was the. Longest she, one. Yeah, and the next one would have been pretty low with Kathy Arnold. She was a good librarian too. Some of them. I remember, I can't remember the one gentleman, his name was, was George. I can't, he only lasted six months, one lasted a year. Hmm. I said I could write a book about the history of the Parson Library. I see a lot of, and I think right now, I think that we have a good library. I really do. You do? 
I think Pottstown is, and I think people should be really proud of what Pottstown have, you know? And I know sometimes I think that, I know, Tom, I sometimes think people don't realize what Pottstown has. I mean, like I told Gus, I don't think people realize what we have in this history, what Pottstown has done. I mean, you be surprised when I tell people Golden Gate Bridge was built by Seal from Pottstown. And they give, and all the, the industry in Pottstown, I mean, Pottstown is well known. I mean, so how long were you at the library from 1962? To, to, let's say, 1960, I started, and 19, uh, 2017. 2017. I was 57 years. 57 years I was at the library. To make, I was hoping to make 60, but I just, I, all I can say is the director was then was, she didn't want, she wanted to give it all old people, just have young, so. But you know what, I said, I said to my brother, maybe it was time for me to go. Well, you certainly met a lot of people over 57 years. I know. I, it's amazing when, when I see people like Gus, where they say, oh, I remember when you, you know, the library, I was the first, like, I was in high school, or you did her homework for me, or then I said, oh my God, I'm really old. I thought, I'm old the hell. <laughs> so what were some of the more memorable things that happened during your 57 years at the library? Uh, what do I can remember? I can't remember, I think, I remember sometimes people would carry on, and, and I guess the only thing I remember one time, I can't remember what year it was. Some man came one year and he had a gun in his hand. I can't remember the whole thing. And, and I think I think when Mrs. Barry was there, and I remember she said to the question, I think I better call the cops. I said, yes, yes, yes. She was, Mrs. Barry, of all my director, besides Kathy, she was the most calm person. Mm -hmm. I mean, and even, I mean, now Kathy used to get a little excited about but she had a way of just calming everything, and she made you feel, and with her ability, she, she I guess of all the directors, I have to say, she, her IQ was up there. She never made you feel insecure, because she was almost ready to be a doctor. She always wanted to be a doctor, but her father didn't think a woman should be a doctor. I never knew that. Yeah, she yeah, she took her she took medical uh, up at, uh, and when she was in Philadelphia, and she told me I want to really want to be a doctor. She really did because she she knew chemistry, but her dad at that time he said, well, you know, woman don't, don't be a doctor. But I remember I can't remember that. But he, he, the man came one year and told me he had a gun, he, and Mrs. Barry said very quietly, I'm going to call a cop. I said, I said, and she so she told the three of us there, just stay there and don't move. So we got you know, and there was. Gentleman that I can't remember the man's name. He went over and talked to the man with the gun, and so the guy able to get him outside. I, I have all kinds of story. I mean, so how did you get involved in the historical society? Okay, um, I think I went to a couple of meetings when they had a me um, program meeting, and Shirley White, she was on the board at that. I know you knew Shirley White or not. I did. Okay, I mean. Uh, and I think, I was, okay, I was up in Bordertown for a while, the Bordertown Historical Society. I ran that for a while. And I was getting tired, and, and I figured, so I said, I think I'm going to quit for a while. And I was still, I was at Pottstown, still working, one year over Bordertown, it was just too much. So I said, so then I went to a couple of meetings, and Shirley White came over, she said, you still at Bordertown? No, she said, oh, do you want to come with us? I said, oh, I don't know, Shirley. And she said, so I said, she said, come over to Hanover Street. It was on Hanover Street. And that little development, that little shopping center. And I said, okay. So she said, she said oh, I think you'll be good, Clara. She said, uh, she took me around that little building. Uh, Ray, Ray Nestor owned the building. Remember Ray Nestor? Yes. Yeah, yeah. he had that building. So uh, I went there in, um, let's see, in the, probably in the 90s, yeah, around 90. 96, 97, it was about four years. And we got it going because people wasn't coming and um, she was doing good. She's the one that really got this library going, Shirley White. So, um, and so then we came down here. When you were up on Hanover Street, it really wasn't set up for anybody to come and visit it. The stuff was it, all now, just. No, it, it, it was busy. It was busy. When we finally got away, it took us about six months to get all the books in order, because we had to uh, 
the gentleman that the man at that time on the board was it got all the books from Hanoi on the manor and put it in the Hanoi tree. <coughs> and we had shelves there. And so we and we said, Oh, maybe we were open just one Sunday a month. Sometimes we had five or six people. Mm -hmm. And we really and, and then Shirley was the one that got all the census records for the the Mercury and and the, and the census records. And she's the one that got a lot of the filing cabinets. I mean, she was a worker. And then, and then at that time, um, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think who's on the board. There were so many different board members. I know you were on the board for a while. I was. Yeah. And, and George Wastaw. I think when we went there, I think George Wastaw, I think he was a board member. I think he was the board president of that. I yeah. think. And then, how did you come to acquire this building? That, I really never got it right. All I remember is, we went around to visit different places. We went up to a place on Hanover and King Street. It was owned by uh, Tom, the Evans family. We looked at that. Then we looked at Van Buskirk. And this building had originally been built as a florist shop. Yeah, we had, yeah we actually it was built, uh, Klein uh, had it. And then Oliver Christmas took it over. I mean, actually, I never really, all I remember is somehow they got a hold of this. I never really got a hold of it. I remember visiting the Busker, uh, owned by Rob Evans III, that building. Mm -hmm. And then we went, to, uh, I never went, and then another place, uh, then they went down on High Street, as a chaos, as a um, law, law firm is there. It looks like one too. Mm -hmm. And I think another one, but I never really got involved with that. But this oh, and, oh, and came available uh, and it was perfect, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, and then what, what was it? The bus car? Yes. Mm -hmm. I thought it was actually good too. Well, but this building was ready to go. Yeah, and then it was much, a little bit, uh, and I think it was a parking was good too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that would have been, I mean, because I guess you know we're running out of space. Yeah. So, I mean, and somehow, I don't know. I mean, probably Bill would tell you he got more involved. He was more involved in getting this building. You're speaking and George. of Bill Kraus, yeah, the fireman. So Bill Kraus and uh, Dave Kearns, yeah, were very uh, were very involved. And so oh yeah, are, and Mike Snarder, oh yeah, was very involved. Yeah, they really so so what is what's what's here? Somebody comes in and they're looking for stuff. What is it they they can look at and find? Oh, everything from uh, from. Church cemetery, right? Uh, church, some churches, cemetery. We have a whole lot of all the different industries in Pottstown, from from fire, Firestone, but from steel, uh, Goodabar, and then we have uh, three big filing cabinets. Uh, family history, say from from uh, Evans, uh, Van Busker, Goodabar family. I mean, I don't know if Gus want to take pictures showing some of the filing cabinets. All along there. Is like we have all the seed directory, yearbooks, um, and then um, and then we have an area over there, one area just for Burke County, Chester County, Montgomery County, and then all the artifacts we. But I would say if you say you want to come in and work on say I want to hit your bathroom seal, we have unveiled file on that, Miss Miss Pie, uh, maps they're looking for now for them like right now where everybody is in Chicken Hill. Mm -hmm. I have a, we have all kinds of information, pictures of what the area looks like with our houses. I have a picture of, of Washington Hill Road. Why don't you explain a little bit about Chicken Hill for people who don't know what it is? I mean, what I've been told is, when they, when they call it Chicken Hill, it was like, a, that's where a lot of the immigrants first came, and it was always on a hill, and everybody had chicks in their backyard. I mean, I knew my mother. My mother grew up in Darby, Darby County, and there was an area called Chicken Hill. Mm -hmm. And it was always, I don't know why, you always seemed like on an incline. And, that, and, that, and that's where the first uh, uh, Jewish synagogue was started. And that's where a lot of the immigrants that in the late 1800s came, and they got houses with a little bit, you know, they could afford. Mm -hmm. And then over the year, like the next generation, maybe moved a little bit down. Town, I mean, I mean. 
So why don't you tell us about the famous visitor who came to learn a little bit about the history of Pottstown? Uh, it was very interesting, especially the one lady from, from Boston, Massachusetts. She, she thought it was all certain race. I don't. I, I said no. I said it was. I, I showed you there was a lot of churches up there. I just read recently there was a Russian Orthodox church up there. I said no. I said that's where the first lot of the Jewish people uh, came. A lot of white. I mean, it, but for some reason, she said that when she read his book. Well, let's go back to the beginning. James McBride comes to the Pottstown Public Library. I know, three years he, ago. Pardon me? Last two years ago, he came. Two years ago, and he was looking for some history of Pottstown, yeah. and they sent him down here. Yeah. No, actually, how he came here, and he was lying around town, and he was up in Pottsville, and they came down through here. And that particular Sunday, we were open, and he stopped in, and he said, what about this chicken hill? He said, I heard that. He said, what is it? He said, it's chicken? And he said, it's all black? I said, no. Now, he's the black person. I mean, he, uh, he's a very interesting man. James McBride. Yeah, he's very interesting. Because uh, his, his father was African-American and his mother was Jewish. Mm -hmm. And he, he had an interesting... I always tell people, if you want to read about his life, read The Color of Water. That would tell you his life. And he said, I want to know about it. It's fascinating. So I said, what I know about it? He said, it's all blast? I said, no. I said, that's what I mean. A lot of town, when they, you know, not to pass town, a lot of people sell a certain area, and when the next generation right, went down, maybe a little bit of area, like the Rosedale section, or maybe B Street or High Street. But he thought it was just, he thought it was only back where they were living there, or he'll, you know. I don't know why, even the lady from, from Boston, Massachusetts said, oh, well, she said, wasn't Boston around, 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 couldn't they come down High Street? I said, no. So, how, how long was James McBride here? Let's see, he, four or five times he came back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To learn more things. Most of it. And I know he talked to Bill Krauss here. Yeah, he brought, yeah, talked to Bill Krauss, and he talked to Charlie, Charlie Johnson. Mm -hmm. I said, I wish she would be alive today. I think she would be amazed how there are. And I think a couple other people he, he talked to too. But uh, yeah, I gave, him, I gave him Bill Krause's name, I gave him Charlie Johnson. And I think he would try and uh, get a hold of the gentleman the head of the NAACP, uh, Carson, head of the black community. Johnny Carson. Yeah, he would try to get a hold of him. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he ever talked to him or not. Mm -hmm. So he came here almost first person, the first place he came was to the Historical Society. Yeah, and, and, and after that, when that book came out, it sort of snowballed. Did you read it? I read it. I, don't, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, did you read it? Yes, and people expect it to be exactly historical, and as you said, it's a novel. Yeah, I mean, so I, he's using names of places in Potsdam, but not necessarily where they were. No, I, mean, I say, I say, in a library, that would be considered a historical novel. But what 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 really amazed me, Tom, how that book is is is, is really is on the bestseller list in the New York Times. He sold a million copies, and the lady from Boston, uh, her sister-in-law, just in the past Sunday, she from Lisbon Gilbertville, she's going to come down again next week, sometime, or maybe the following week. Now she wants more information about the Opera House fire. She wants information about rainy rocks, rainy skin. I mean, because they want to start a, a club, a book club up there. I, I just wish more people would just come in here and use it. But I'm trying to get David and maybe Bill, or maybe maybe some of the board members. We only have open house. I would like to have open house some, some maybe in the summertime. Mm -hmm. Open house and, and really advertise and put it in the paper and we be five people with what we have. And this this building is open what times? Okay, we're open two Sundays a month, the second and fourth Sunday of every month, one to, one to four. Or if you want to make an appointment, you can always, you know, but most of the time we're open the two Sundays a month. I'm Tom Hilton. Thank you for joining me and Clara Haas to discuss the history of the Pottstown Regional Public Library and 
the history of the Pottstown Historical Society, which has wonderful artifacts here on High Street for people to visit. This is the making of Pottstown. Thank you for coming and joining us.